Welcome to the set. I'm really happy to welcome you to MNN, and it's really good. I'm really happy to do this program that will air on Columbus Day of the year 2005, which is a major uh, break point in the terms of my life, and I really thank you for coming in. Thanks, sir. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. And the work is good. You guys see, you showed me some things I hadn't really realized. I'm anxious to catch up oh, with you it all. Right into the studio. Yeah, I know. I got to get down. And we're flat iron. Yeah. Um, welcome, welcome, uh, very, very much. To conversations where it's a pleasure to welcome to the program uh, an old friend of Conversations and myself. That being uh, William Vinci. He's an artist and a designer. He works architecturally. He does design in a number of different directions. He's a real serious artist and. Uh, uh, he's uh, here discussing all of this today, which will air on Columbus Day of, uh, of 2005. And he has a, an Italian background. He is inspired by Leonardo da Vinci, I believe. We're going to talk about that and other matters. And William, uh, Billy, if I may, welcome really very much to Conversation. You, so honey. good to see you and welcome you to the set. Man. Always good to see you. All right. Now, talk to me a little bit and to the audience about your own background. We do that, as you know, uh, where you're born, raised, that sort of thing. And then we'll get into a discussion about art and uh, the Renaissance. I know you're a great student of da Vinci and that sort of thing. But could you share a little bit of your own background, please? Born in uh, Brooklyn, New York, uh -huh. the 50s. All right. Moved around quite a bit. Um, great place to be. Mm -hmm. um, very much family oriented. The grandfathers, uh, very talented grandfathers. One was a pastry chef. Mm -hmm. Very um, talented. Um, and uh, my other, my mother's uh, father, Amadeo, was a um, painter. Artist, classically trained. Right. Okay. Yeah. And right. Um, very much of an influence on, on my my career, yeah, my life. You told me he was an inspiration to very you. Very much so. Yeah. 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 Now, was he born here? Or did he come no, over he was from born uh, in Naples. Okay. Good. Came over uh, right before the First World War. Right. Actually, and then, subsequently, went back mm -hmm. to fight, mm -hmm. um, and was wounded, and huh. came back and uh, here and settled in Manhattan, went to the Art Students League and trained himself left-handed. Left-handed, yeah. Yeah, because he was wounded. He was in his right arm. My the Lord. War. He had been right-handed and then he had to yep. work and change. He went to the Art Students League, was yeah. written up there. Um, so that must was to be say a, it was a huge transformation. I can't do anything with my left. I guess if you had to, you could learn. Well, that's really what hard. And if I'm not mistaken, you said you're amadex. Well, you yeah. Work both my, hands, right? my father was a yeah. ball player. Uh -huh. Early on, taught mm -hmm. me to do things with my left side. Uh huh. So, which, in in a lot of ways, mm. comes in handy actually. I bet it would. Yeah. But um, we had, we had a mutual friend in Harriet Blazer who was a great figurative, mixed painting and sculpture. She was inspiration, and she used to work both hands. It was ambidextrous, which mm -hmm. I think is a great you know, thing. Harry you, you do do that? You work yeah. in, well, okay, okay. Uh, but it's, it's not, uh, I, I stick through my strengths, but yeah, mm. it's, it's always there. And you've had association with the art the students league yep. too, I think. Yeah. You know? well, and your, dad, and your, your uh, grandfather. grandfather had been associated with yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. You went back and looked up some of the records and there yeah, it was. Yeah, I found you know? his, uh, his admission cards, uh -huh. 1923, yeah. where he lived. Um, and then, um, you know, so he was a very quiet man, mm -hmm. did a lot, mm -hmm. made wine, mm -hmm. you know, talking about Italian heritage, yeah, you know, right. background with Columbus. Mm. And, um, you know, just uh, it showed me how to do things, you know, making wine, drawing, everything was taught me early on. I did a lot of cartoons when mm -hmm. I was uh, younger and then just stopped, really. But um, as I got older, I went back into it in the 70s, you yeah. know, uh, and my travels to uh, Italy in the late 70s, going to Carrara, was a big, big thing, big That's influence. That's the place that where Michelangelo turned. got all that beautiful marble, if I'm not well, mistaken, and others. Yeah, yeah. yeah it just being there in the, in the stark whiteness in the mountains yeah. just it, it did something. It was very spiritual. It just um, I came back with a whole different approach. Yeah, you know. But you, 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 did you study art, or did you pick it? Did you, did you know you had an inclination or yeah. an aptitude for it, and yeah. so forth? Yeah. I remember we used to be with Harriet sometimes, right. and she was so good, she would take a drawing. I remember having a cup of coffee one time in a restaurant, and would draw a thing, 
and it would, and then I went to do it, and it looked like a uh, uh, cats and jam. I mean, my drawing, it could not make the thing look like what it is. You know, it's a, it's a special thing. You think an artistic capability? We saw this thing. We we're just talking Da Vinci, and we're talking now on Columbus Day, actually, and everything. That he was a divine. He was inspired. There was something about him, or Michelangelo, or the Renaissance. There was something about them that was really a gift of. Uh, of God or something, and is it something that's born, do you think, or how, how do we account for the, the really truly creative giants in the artistic realm, do you think? Well, I mean, first of all, I, I think it's, it's a period. I mean, this, in that period, the High Renaissance, yeah. you know, I mean, Leonardo was born in, in 1452, and, you know, and, and, you know, and the advent um, just 1500. I mean, it was a yeah. huge the explosion. Yeah. I mean, there were so many talented yeah. people. That I think that's about the same time Columbus was born. Well, Columbus set sail, you know. In 92, right. 1490. But he was the, born, I think, in Genoa, I think. Now, where was Da Vinci born? Do you happen to know? In, in uh, Ambrose, which was uh, um, just in Vinci, is a town. Yeah. Just uh, right next to uh, Vinci. Yeah, but where's Amber? I don't know. It's right. It, it's near a, Rome yeah. It's a no, Tuscany no. It's or? in. It's in. It's in. In the um, Tuscany. It's in uh -huh. Tuscany. It the is. Hills, yeah. yeah. The hills of Tuscany. Yeah. In the town of Vinci. And, and that's your namesake, or yeah. Vinci? You got right. the namesake. It's a well, he had ten half half brothers. Da Vinci did. Yeah, yeah Vinci. Yeah. And ten yeah. half brothers and. Uh, and uh, how do we, yeah, uh, again, or we have Beethoven, we have Brahms, we have Mozart, they're both. It's periods. You know, it's, it's periods. It's, a, it's a, yeah, you know, you it was think a it is. It's a period, something in the period. And the Renaissance is coming out of the Dark Ages, and you had this incredible explosion in, uh, in Italy, you know, the Renaissance and so forth. Right. Anyway, you, did you have a sense when you were young that you had a talent for art, or when did you pick up I the was, idea uh, that you may be an artist? Uh, I, was, sort of I, I was so involved in so many different things. Yeah. I was um, very uh, searching, always searching. Yeah. And, and I think what did it, um, the seed was planted with my grandfather. Yeah, you he know, was an artist. You yeah. know, um, mm -hmm. just being around him, Amadeo. Um, and, you know, as I got older, and yeah. then the subsequent trips to Italy, um, uh -huh. there were certain things that happened. And then, you know, in the, at that time, late 70s, early 80s, I met another famous artist, uh, Angelo Savelli. Yeah, we've got some of him uh, that uh, we're going to show, yeah. Uh, I know he was a great inspiration to you as well. Amazing. He had yeah. abstract minimalist. Um, yeah. I had come back from Carrara and I started doing white and gray mm -hmm. uh, sculptural paintings. Mm -hmm. and I had mm -hmm. a loft on St. Mark's mm -hmm. and um, had everything laid out on the floor. I was doing these huge installation pieces. I remember you went and we had a visit with him down near the uh, uh, later, uh, Fulton Street. Later or, on. Yeah. But nice. He was a very good man. Sweet, I thank you for very introducing spiritual me to man, him briefly. You know, yeah. uh, he actually was a good friend of Louis, Louis Kahn, the, really, great, the architect, great architect. Really, the great architect. And Piero Durazio. Mm -hmm. Um, was in a very f uh, famous artist, mm -hmm. and uh, he actually Angelo started the um, rearranged the art department at uh, University of Pennsylvania. Really? Yeah. I in mean, what way? In, in modernizing it. Uh -huh, he came uh -huh. from Italy in the fifties. He right. was becoming very famous in Italy in, in the fifties, uh -huh. and he just picked up and left. He uh -huh. had a very free spirit. Uh -huh. Just picked up and left. Came to and New York. Came to New York, uh -huh. you know, and and a lot of people were just dumbfounded by that, but his. He, that's the way he was. Uh -huh. And I had the great fortune of meeting him, and I was doing these, uh, these pieces in, inspired by my trip, to, it seemed, uh -huh. from you Carrara, and then coming back, and Savelli was, became known for his white on white, stark white paintings. Yeah. So it was very, it was a very, it was wild how we met. We uh -huh. wound up meeting. And, and that, uh, that, that resonated with you, the minimalist thing right. that he was presenting right. and the whole movement in art. That and that just grounded, that grounded yeah. me there uh -huh. for, for, for a long time. And uh -huh. I became an assistant. And um, to for him? 15 years, we, I worked with him. Oh, that I, long? I didn't realize yeah. it was that long, really. Actually, huh? as he got later on in his life, I helped him put together his show and his, his uh, Unfortunately, his last show he had at the Biennale, the Venice Biennale, I put it together for him. Uh -huh. And uh, he passed away now 10 years. It's yeah, has it been that long? Yeah, right? yeah. He was a gentle, beautiful soul. I really Absolutely. enjoyed that. It made, now, it made a big difference in my life. <coughs> so Leonardo da Vinci, who they just had uh, a big celebration of, uh, of his, they had a thing on the uh, public television about how they took his design. Right. He had an imagination Mechanical, and huh? a, 
a, a spirit that was absolutely incredible, apparently. He had so many things, engineering, uh, right, the yeah. human body, anatomy, he was yeah. doing all of these things. He was a genius of a high well, order. Uh, finally and he was also an inspiration to you because well, you've done figured this uh, stuff. You know, yeah. you, you can't yeah. help but it yeah. follows you around. You yeah. can't help but, you know, if you, you get a little older, you appreciate, you know, you start realizing that, the, you know, taking uh, trips to Italy and yeah. being in, in the town, pilgrimages to Vinci. Yeah. Have you, have you, have you had, you've had some time over there. Do you have people there at all? Uh, Can you trace uh, back to people like uh, from your grandfather's side? Or, uh, he, he I never re really went uh, and, and got so particular. I have him on my father's side is mm. Sicilian. Uh -huh. And... Um, and my mother's n n from uh, Naples, ne uh -huh. Neapolitan. South, the South, yeah. yeah and, um, but, you know, you can't help it carrying around the name and, you know, so, but uh, it, it was to, um, you know, to, to be there was a, it was a um, very much of, of uh, influence, yeah. you know, coming yeah. back mm -hmm. and then a meeting uh, a, a great artist like Angelo, mm -hmm. and and, and uh, working with him, and you know, and, and the kind of work that he was doing was yeah. very, you know, was structural, you know, uh, non-objective, minimalist, and white. And I was doing these very. Um, what were you, you know, doing before you met? I him? was doing uh, I was doing grays uh -huh. and whites reliefs on canvas, uh -huh. which was like they were um, jump. I call them jump paintings. They uh -huh. would, li you know, seem to a leap off. Were you moving minimalistly before you met him? Yeah, in your yeah, and that was the, the the wild thing about it. Yeah. And um, and then we met, and it kind of like you know, it kind of amorphosized into yeah. uh, a mentor a, kind of thing. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, you know, so now know. we're we're going to show some of his work and that and everything because I understand that. But also, I know you you've done these mosaics. That have you have layered fresco like mosaics that you do. You've done a lot of design work for public buildings, restaurants, and public buildings, and that sort of thing, public meeting spaces. Mm. And you have this layered fresco that you learned, yeah, it's like which a secco. apparently is a what's it called? It's a secco. It's like yeah. Italian plaster. It, right. it, the medium became because I used to do a lot of experimentation with uh, gessos and um, uh, different mixing different materials right. and, and formulating different materials. I remember plaster was a, is a, was a big thing. Yeah, and, and you had it layered. And, right. you, and I went to a wall, you had a wall, and you could see depth well, in you the, know, because you had it this layered. This was early over. on. Early yeah. on. Now they have these things where, you yeah. know, it's synthetic. But this is all the old, I use the old materials, the slate lime, uh -huh. you know, the linseed oils, the old, tra the old traditional style. That's that the I thing learned. they had in the piece about uh, da Vinci, uh, that he was experimenting always, with that always. very thing, that, that layering of, of, yeah. of, of fresco, well, everything was which is a great art form. Yeah. He, uh, ironically, I mean, uh, you know, the, the Last Supper was falling apart during his lifetime. Really? You know? yeah. yeah, I mean, because yeah. he experimented egg tempura and it, tempera and he, uh, you know, it, it, so alchemy. You know. Yeah. So we're celebrating today the program, the, this air will air on the October 12th. And we're celebrating, you know, this Columbus Day. And so, so it's Columbus was we made a great discovery, and that was coming out of the Italian Renaissance. He, of course, came from, you know, the Canary Islands, say all that sort of thing. But in a certain sense, is representative of the spirit of the Italian Renaissance. In a sense, it was the beginning to move out. It was a big transformation in terms of a quiescent history that had been previous to that for a long time, and it marks the beginning of an era that might be still with us, huh? mm -hmm. in a sense. And it began in a very real sense in Italy, and it's worthwhile in this Columbus Day series, a season, to celebrate or at least take recognition of the fact that there was this explosion that happened coming in large measure from Italy. There was others involved, but it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a rebirth of, uh, you know, back to the classical and a rebirth of a capability that was very significant in the evolution of human history. Mm. And you're in that tradition, well, and perhaps I like to proud be, yeah. to be in I, that I, tradition. That's the word. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, I never, I never um, searched out, uh, used it as a as a business, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah. In the, tr in the, in the, the I, I, you know, I did it. I did what I did. You know, um, experimentation. I mean, even in the early '80s, I, I did a lot, believe it or not, in performance art in the early '80s. 
Uh, you did performance art. You were doing some music. I perf know, uh, performance I mean, yeah. art in in the early late seventies, early eighties, uh -huh. when it was just, you know, uh, you know, dance. Yeah. You know, and it was was something that uh, made really opened me up. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, dance and the line and dance. Um, the line in dance. The line, the movement. Yeah. You know, there's a line, a beauty, a line uh -huh. in dance that uh -huh. was, was uh, is so. It, it, at that time, was like you know, it, it just like changed. It's like listening yeah. to a, a good song. It changes mm -hmm. your molecular structure, and yeah. you know, you just feel something. Yeah. Through. Yeah. 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 And and from dance, you know, and doing these, we did performance pieces. You know, these small venues that, that don't exist anymore. They yeah. they had these, and some of these these. Uh, there's a lot of people that are no longer with us, you mm. know. But uh, very talented people, you know, at that time. Now that, that, that you're talking late '70s, early, early, very early '80s. The yeah. early '80s, yeah. you were performing in Doing a dance a, thing. Well, like, I don't the, remember that. Yeah, you know? well, that was before. I think we met a little bit a few, a, 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 a few years later. I remember later. we met with Richie Havens was coming with a connection record and that yeah. sort of thing. Uh, upstate. And that was, you know, that was upstate of Limp. That. But I didn't know you did dance in a, in well, a performance yeah, way. Well, yeah, we did some, yeah, some yeah. abstract. It wasn't something that I was trained to do. I just, I, I had been involved with the group. Uh, a group. I didn't yeah, know you were involved yeah, in a yeah. dance group. Well, yeah, it yeah. became so. Uh -huh. What know? was it called? In well, it? nothing in particular. Mm -hmm. um, there was a group of people that were there, and I got involved with them and uh -huh. threw myself into a few things, and it became, you know, we did a few shows. Yeah. And, and then, but it was a, it was a few shows that we did in one particular summer mm -hmm. and uh, you know d designed some sets and some very mm -hmm. abstract performance art which All was right. you know like Psycho 3 the musical and right. you know but it translates I think the muse and the thing translates from poetry to music to art to sculpture it really does and it's a, a realm that's so rich and so important well, to just this. opened me up yeah uh -huh. you know it's just like sinuses you know mm. you just <laughs> you know yeah and did you take some training? You you went to st our students league. Yeah, this, right? uh, you know, went to new uh, school. And, yeah. you know, studied art history, and uh -huh. you know, I mean, uh, being around Angelo and 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 you know, uh, that's all the training. You know, you really. Uh, yeah. I was locked in, you know, with him for a while. I wonder if we could come back to that theme about this being Columbus Day. Yeah. This airs because that theme I was saying is that that they, they were both born about uh, da Vinci and uh, Michelangelo and the James General period. There was like 15 years difference between them. Yeah, it's pretty close in terms yeah, of yeah. the sweep so, of human history and it was all that period and everything. So um, that that's a that's a that's a, a, a major contribution made by the Italian uh, Renaissance and that sort of thing. And uh, Columbus was quite a character in himself. You've studied a lot of Da Vinci. Yeah. You, he's an inspiration to you, well, and yeah, you've became, done a lot of became, study. Became, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the man. He was well, such a, a genius. Is that the one that Bill, I mean, uh, what's his name, Gates, has taken? Yeah, yeah. Got the, uh, uh, the he hammer. paid a huge amount for the papers. Well, of he actually Vinci, saved it. The great the genius. Uh, he might be the great genius in an intellectual yeah. sense of uh, in, in, in human history. Or well, something. he's a. Bill Gates, to his credit, no. you know he 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 saved a a um, a very important codex, which they say is a uh, it was Arm and Hammond the great the yeah. uh, great I shouldn't say throw, but he was yeah. uh, but he took the name Arm and Hammond actually attached his own name to it mm -hmm. so when Gates bought the the codex he actually restored the original name to it so okay. it's just a bunch of mechanical drawings it's very very important piece of, uh, actually they had the exhibit uh, about six or seven years ago at, mm -hmm. at, at the, at uh, the Met Metro. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, but, um, <coughs> you know, uh, you know, talking about in this period, Columbus, uh, uh -huh. you know, I, I mean, he was right there. That was the, the time where, uh, you know, it was a 1492, right? That's well, that's when he about. sailed over here. And that, that was the linking up of the... Uh, because we all come out of Africa, we know. I mean, from the genetic understanding DNA, we all, the, we're six billion of us now, and uh, something like that, I guess, heading for nine. And we all come out of a small, maybe an individualized gene pool out of Africa. And it was interesting to me that to the, they, there was migration over time. They, there was a long time, they were in Kazakhstan. Uh, with the human, there was a migration out of Africa, and then there was uh, some few 
fellow named Spencer Wells had a thing on about it called the Journey of Man, and they can trace. It's amazing with the markers on the DNA, both Y chromosome and also mitochondrial with the female side, and they could trace it. And that they had crossed Beringia back about uh, 12, 13,000 years ago into the New World, the Amerindian peoples, and they had gone 95 percent of the way around the world well, to the east. I put in it a migratory pattern, yeah. I put it in context and I said 1492, which is um, I guess it was it was about 10 years before Da Vinci did the last supper. Isn't that something? So man? just to give in context yeah. of the time period, you yeah. know. Um, usually great movements in art coalesce with other sociological political and the printing press. Enough. The print was, Gutenberg was in the same general period. Cuz the period. printing press, I mean, I, you know, that yeah. that, that that yeah. was probably one of the greatest, I mean, is the greatest invention. Well, I told you that thing, Time Magazine did a thing in 19, at the turn of the millennium, and they said that he was the most influential person in the history of the world was mm. Gutenberg, right. they were saying. I, I'm not sure. We got now all kinds of multimedia things. But they had gone 95% of the way around the world. That would be the American Indians that would be in Brazil, say, for instance. They're coming a short, short distance to Africa. But in the e westward direction, they had only gone about 30 degrees of longitude to the west. We hadn't moved to the west. We hadn't moved across the Atlantic Ocean hardly at all in all that time where the eastward sweep of mankind had gone. And then when Columbus met with the Lacayan Indian peoples in San Salvador on October 12th of 1492, it was a meeting of the east and the west. For Very October 12th. October 12th is the day <laughs> of this, uh, of the airing of this program. In mm -hmm. fact, it was at October no, 11th, about 10 p.m., that Christopher Columbus saw a light on an island, in, or saw a light in the far distant horizon, and they were frantic. The men were very, very, very frantic that they would never be able to get back with the trade winds coming. They'd sailed 33, direct, 33 days from the Canary Some Islands. Cinnamon, huh? I beg your pardon? <laughs> no, they were very worried. And they had, and, and the Pinzon brothers, they had to put down a mutiny, an mm. uh, uh, actual mutiny. He said, we'd have to turn around. And he was driven to go. There's something about the artistic temperament that has a, uh, like they said in that thing about Da Vinci, he was just driven with so many ideas that were overriding his mind. He just couldn't finish all the well, projects. Well, exactly. He was you know, so one busy. thing in There's something unique never about finished. the creative yeah. artistic temperament. You know, he's ne he hardly finished anything. You know, mm -hmm. the other thing is um, talking about. I think he hasn't gotten the full recognition of his. Um, anonymical drawings as far as uh, the studies the doctors now the are s finally realizing right there was a lot of he had important inventions that were they were, they were just they were too hard he to was grasp. doing uh, da vinci was doing anatomy he was things doing that when it and was not allowed he had to he do got, it on the slide he got, he got away with it because yeah. he did a lot for the church but and did you see that fellow a doctor who in that thing that they well, had like on public I, television like he said they got the valves of the heart exactly the way it operates right? and he was hundreds of They're years still ahead using of his it. Time. They're using it today in his anatomical they were <laughs> anatomically perfect and they said you couldn't do those drawings uh, you know those uh, those figurative drawings with that kind of thing without a knowledge of the musculature right. and all that right well and the, when the doctors finally are viewing this yeah. and looking at it see now, history yeah. has yeah. shown that art historians yeah. have, have viewed this and taken it apart but uh -huh. now when when, you, when doctors highly regarded doctors are looking at it, you yeah. know, finally coming out. I don't the know same. why. Yeah. And they're, they're realizing that, you know, the, the valve systems. I mean, his invention, f you know, his, his dissections of the, the, the heart valve yeah. are taken. I mean, that's how they came up with the, the, um, the replacement valves yeah. today. I know, yeah. Our direct result. Yeah, you know. somebody once said the, the artists are the intent of the race. They're ahead of their time. Well, he was a couple this 500 years ahead of his time. This is with ca candles now, mind you. I've Cutting up the yeah. cadavers with candles. With candles. I mean, what a great movie. He, he, you know, yeah, we're I mean, doing with candles. You know, then, so, yeah. you know, but so was talk Columbus. about dri driven. Yeah. yeah, driven. Columbus was driven. He was really driven. You'd read Morrison. He was really driven in this western direction to go to the Japongo and everything. And it was on, uh, he had been told them that they had to, if they didn't discover land, we're taping on the 7th, so we're in a, in a thing with the cycle. Uh, ninth, on the 9th of October, Christopher Columbus had to put down practically a, a physical mutiny involving the Pinzon brothers, mm -hmm. too. And he had to put them down, and he had to promise that it's sort of like a fairy tale, but it was true, it, that if they didn't find land within three days, he would give serious consideration to turning and going back, which was running against the whole 
thrust of what he was driven to do. He's a great mariner. Mm -hmm. I mean, Columbus was. And this was a great moment of the meeting of mankind's eastwardmost and westernmost extensions from where we all come, which is Africa. But they, they did that. <coughs> <coughs> and it was about 10 p.m. on uh, October 11th of 1490, it's in the uh, journal, that they saw a little candle on the far distant horizon, or it looked like a candle bobbing up and down, a light that Columbus saw and another fellow saw, somebody else didn't, and then they made firm landfall at 2 a.m. But he was 69, I think it was 69, 29 nautical miles off the east coast of San Salvador, mm -hmm. island in the Bahamas, about the size of Manhattan, 140 feet highest elevation inhabited by the Lacayan Indian peoples who represented that eastward migration of mankind. Columbus representing the westward movement of mankind coming out of the Renaissance mm -hmm. and so forth. It's a big event and uh, they, they, they drew a line of longitude where he would have seen that candle like light on the side, probably a fire built on a hilltop over there to light the fishermen coming back. And if you draw that line of longitude it comes along the east coast of the United States, comes ashore in Brooklyn. It, that's where it comes a lot. The line comes, it crosses and it bisects Borough Park, and it goes through. It's, it's 73 degrees, I think 56 minutes and six seconds of west longitude is a spot where Columbus would have seen this light, which is mystically linking eastward and most westward. Most. And it comes along, it goes across the East River, at 40, and it bisects the doesn't world headquarters of the United Nations. Doesn't surprise me. No, it, I mean, it's incredible. It, and those are the exact actual Coast and Geodetic Survey designation for the world headquarters of the United Nations, which is really kind of interesting. And then it goes and bisects Central Park right through New York City. Mm -hmm. That was the meeting of the East West. Uh, maybe we should start thinking about changing the prime meridian. You to know. coming through New York. Do you think it would be a good idea to do that? It would be too big of an inconvenience it, to mess it, up all the maps if know. we went from Greenwich so, to New York. Something, it, it just, what it, do you think? Or is that too just, much of a stretch? Well, it just, it just brings to mind a, a, a situation where Angelo Savelli, mm -hmm. his studio, his last studio was on Water Street, mm -hmm. and he used to go to the Paris Cafe yeah. for dinner every night. Yeah. And that's where Edison they threw the switch. Oh, wow. That's where the they electrical, lit the first part of New York. The, yeah. the first electrical current mm -hmm. happened. The first light bulb that went on was from the Paris Cafe. No kidding. And Savelli would go there. So, I mean, he, yeah, he was, was, he was of my that? light. I he mean, was going that, there because that, of that, or it just happened to be this corner? No, problem? no, it yeah. that, would, that wouldn't be his style. But, uh -huh. but It wouldn't be his style no, to make a point of that no, figure no, Edison no, was, no, no. no? But he just happened. He, no, had, that, he had that light. Yeah, yeah. Well, this man, you're interested in this man. Why don't we show up? Can we show a picture of the man that was one of the inspirations? Uh, yeah. Da Vinci's a big inspiration. Well, Your grandfather's a big inspiration. But also, this is a man who was a minimalist. Maybe we can just show the picture of him. I'm not sure. If uh, people, I don't have to hold it. I can hold it here then, and they can come in on that. It's going to take a second to come in. Maybe you could talk about this man who was an inspiration well, to you. We show some of his work. We'll show a couple pictures of him. Came over. There he is. We can see him now. Um, I had, you know, we met in the early 80s, and. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you say he was well known in Europe before yeah, he jumped over yeah, here. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. and. Um, he um, actually came. He was like, good friends with Louis Kahn and mm -hmm. Piero D'Orazio and uh, and um, Leo Castelli. Castelli had the gallery yeah. downtown. Uh, yeah. He met. Uh, you know, he had cross paths with Duchamp and really, you know, but, Dada. But yeah, uh, mm -hmm. but you know, but he was doing, a minimalist. Huh? Doing that kind of work, yeah. you know, it was you know there was void of color. Uh -huh. Was yeah. was very it was a unique unique thing. Where did the minimalist thing? What are the roots? Well, of coming the from what Angelo when he came mm. over, we he, have another picture. He we'll also show that has you involved. We were doing in a, uh, we had, doing a mural, mm -hmm. and he would always for some he would just put red, mm -hmm. a, a touch of red in it, and in anything he did uh -huh. slightly. Uh, just a dot or something. Just and that's you in the foreground? Very, yeah. Yeah. An and you were working with him for a good number of years, actually, yeah. as an intern. Well, uh, actually, apprentice. as he got older, he, uh -huh. his, his um, doing his exhibits became a little harder for uh -huh. him to get his work together. Because sure. some of it was very sculptural. Just physically. And and was, yeah. yeah. So I would actually assist him and put it together. And okay. Even for his last show in the, the, the Biennale. 
And that was his last. What year yeah. would that have been? In, in, uh, it was um, 95. Now here we, we also have had a, a retrospective in '95 too. Okay. At, at the uh, in Prato. In Prato, where in, in Tuscany. In Tuscany, yeah. right. Now this is a book, right? Mm -hmm. Now is, there's some work in here that of is of his that we could show quickly. Yeah, this. this. Yeah, is there something you want to select? Perhaps I'll hold it up for them. To well, see. he did. He did things that were um, they were very architectural. I th he was architectural. Huh. All you uh -huh. know, there were things that were you well, know there's okay. some. I'm just going to hold it up, and then you can come in with the camera, and you can talk about it. You know, there's there's just there's just a whole array. I mean, it's it's just there's n I don't know where to start. I mean, his his um, there were it was also very spiritual. You know, uh -huh. I mean, he, he was, was very spiritual. into yoga. He was. Yeah, yeah you have to this to know him. You yeah, to, you really need to get a good to see the work. It. it to know the background makes it all come together. Shall I go and look at a couple of others yeah. in here and so forth? These are the ropes were very. Uh, there was a period where he did ropes. Everything was very, you know, white, mm -hmm. stark, clean. Mm -hmm. That's the cover here. This and he is did, one of the rope things. Right? He did. The, yeah. On the cover of the, was Jesse. this a, was this uh, accompanying a show or something? This was a, his his uh, retrospective. Oh, the retrospective, yeah. the last. Yeah. All right. All right. And um, you helped put that together, or helped him put it. Yeah, together? the um, the one in Prato no, for the Biennale, getting his final works together for uh -huh. the exhibit, and um, that was, and then he he died in April of uh, ninety five. The year after that. Yeah, and then um, it was no. good. You could get the retrospective together. Right? Well, yeah, oh. but um, you know it's a, but anyway, he was a. And always will be a big influence. You yeah, know. on you. Yeah. 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 Now, why don't we turn to yours then? Why don't we talk about some of that? Because you brought in a few things that we can show, a few works and so forth well, that you're involved with. And maybe I can hold them up, and then people, these are some of the works of art that you've been involved with. And you want to show them here, yeah. and we'll hold them up, and yeah, you sure. can talk to them if I hold them up for you. Well, okay? there's, um, uh, let's see. You want to go with this? Okay, whatever. This is just some okay, now tell me. Th we'll these are these. Are, this is just a series, few, a few <coughs> pieces that he did of, an, of, of a series that was about four four years ago. Structure, um, a uh, they were um, abstract. Uh huh. That's uh, raised. The red is raised. Yeah. Yeah. A, the metal. From a canvas? Is that canvas? It's on canvas, uh -huh. but it, it was just a period that I went through a very. Uh, it was. Uh, you had the red. He had red, you said, too. No, it's metal. Uh -huh. It's actually metal. That, that is metal? Yeah. Actually made of metal? Yeah, right. What is the material? Like? It's steel. Yeah, you put that on a canvas, yeah. right? Yeah, but, uh -huh. and it's saturated with pigment. So it's uh -huh. just a, it was just a particular series I did. Okay. You know? And shall I just take the next one? And how's this that? Is, this is other. It's, it's metal also, orange, mm -hmm. on and canvas. You got that right. It was a series of fiber. I call them fiber um, sculptures. And is that fiber raised? sculptures? Is that raised? Yeah, raised. Uh -huh. And it's, it's, it's on called the white is Florida. Canvas? Is, it, or is that the paper? Is that is that it's all? It's on canvas. On it canvas. is on canvas. Yeah. Okay, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, those are those were um, a part of a, uh, a series that I had sold. Um, mm -hmm. And this is um, another series I did uh, plaster on paper. This is plaster. Li huh? Liquefied plaster pl on paper. Liquefied plaster on paper. Geometrics overlaid uh -huh. depth. So you know. are those are those are those uh, are those raised again? Yeah, the plaster? it becomes. What would yeah. it be? How high? It's hard to get the dimension. I mean, just for just instance, very you know very uh, slightly, an eighth of an inch or something. Less. Or, yeah, and it was done. Yeah. But it's almost like a, it, 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 the, the feel I was searching for is putting together the the whole point of it was putting together colors that give this feeling. It's almost like a modern um, kind of it. it there's, a, there's an antiquity to it. It mm -hmm. kind of looks like something from the 50s. It's kind of like a design painting. Okay. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. To give the feeling, you know, it's Here's another then, right? retro with a modern feel. Just it's a combination of marrying colors together uh -huh. to give a feel uh, interconnected colors. There's certain colors that seem like they're family members that work together on an overlay and yeah you know so it was a study and that was know. overlaid then yeah that, yeah and and this is this also what is this now this is that's the same the same the plaster same. on paper yeah it's the same this this plaster three. On, okay yeah no french then, brown paper this is m uh, my homage this is getting into your da, da vinci right this was uh, this was about 
10, 12 years ago, 10 years ago, uh -huh. I'd say just maybe. It's figurative, yeah. Yeah, it's my homage to, to Da Vinci. Those were, those I took his, his particular drawings, those are five pieces that he did, but I put them on, it's on sheetrock, uh -huh. and uh, it's a seco, which is, I was working with a, a typical uh, Renaissance materials mm. only. Seco. Yeah, right. Could you explain what that well, is? Well, it's, it's working with dry. Fresco is working with wet plaster. You have to work small uh -huh. uh, areas, and it, it's uh, very involved. But is Seco it, is, yeah. is working on dry plaster. You have a lot, of, a lot more time and freedom to uh -huh. work with. So, and actually, once it's, it, it bonds together, uh -huh. it becomes fixed. Now, you've done Fresco. Huh? Yeah, it's very, very, it's, it's, it's very... Um, it's very involved. Challenging, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know. okay, now let's see. I'm trying it's to get it's this. It's practicality. Um, you got a problem with the pages here. Let me just get it. Let's see. Uh, you got this one, and then. Oh, oh there we go. Okay, it's it's just a, a, a section of. Well, that's a section. That's the old we man. show them together, maybe. Yeah, huh? oh, okay. Okay, well. come in on that. Okay. And then you've taken the, oh, I see. Okay, right. And then the, the, the one after that is, you just showed it already. Yeah, okay. Okay. So let's go on. This right. is here. These are some right. things that had been. So it's just a, a Roman or. head, and then th another series I did were was um, taking Ro Renaissance esque figures and putting them. It's on sheetrock. It's mm -hmm. my canvas. I cut well, them up. You've worked on a lot of different material. Well, yeah. you know what it does is just it it it, it I have the freedom. It's mm -hmm. very forgiving. Mm -hmm. Cutting it to size and and working on the material. Um, I used Renaissance esque figures. Mm -hmm. with geometrics. So I did this whole series of, um, as you can see, this is raised mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. plaster. Again, and the raised plaster. You do, you've done quite a bit of Modern yeah. with the old with the new, kind I of see. marrying the uh -huh. together. It's just a, I did a series of five. I kind of wor I work with odd. When I do something, I do a series, and then I move on, and it seems to be five or six, maybe. You have and a pattern. On, so whether it's this, one? you know, um, the fiber things I did a series, yeah, and then I keep them in my studio, and I have like an open mm -hmm. thing, and people will come, clients, mm -hmm. and you know, and um, that's how I work. You know, it seems to be. That's I don't, the way, I'm not is that the way the muse moves you, or something like that? Well, or are I don't, you I've never been one to go out. Of what's in of, gold? Uh, or what what is moving you that that's way? That's the yeah. thing. It's yeah. it's uh, uh, it's an interesting question because mm. uh, I've never been one to work flow with any kind of. Um, it's just, it's it's just something that something will spark something for me whether or not uh, you know. It, yeah. I'm constantly putting things down. I think you're an artist. And I think what happens is that yeah. I, I yeah. you know and then I'll yeah. I'll have find the time. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know and I want to do a series. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh -huh. To f fulfill you know the vision you know that I think I have. Right. You know? So right. I'll try to get it done and move on to. You know, when you start doing something, you know what you're going to do. You have it all constructed no, in your mind, or do you tend to build from the canvas up or something, or move. I have the, the parameters are set, yeah. uh -huh. you know, and I want to make sure I want to stick, you know. So I followed. Uh, I did a one, series of five of these Renaissance-esque yeah. heads with uh -huh. these geometrics, with a modern background. This you is know, the I took one. it it's like out of context, really, uh -huh. putting this head because uh -huh. it's a tip, very typical Roman, yeah. if you will, right? Classical. Roman head. It's just very free form, and it's it's a seco, which is linseed oil, slate lime, you know, pigments, mm -hmm. and I do a wash background, and it soaks in, and boom, it's done. It's it's like it's part of there. It's there forever. When you're doing this, are you having a good time, or yeah. is it a hard job, or how is it a slog, or good what? Good question. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> no. You got something else here? Yeah, that, yeah that, that was, was a commission uh, I did last yeah. year. This, uh, is a, two this years was ago. a commission. Yeah. yeah was this a, was a mural, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. In a uh, private residence. Yeah. 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 It, 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 and the dimensions of this would be what? About um, it's pretty big. Well, the, there's a lot of void area. It was it was done in in this like vortex. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so the the head, you know, I I would say it was like, you know, yeah, three. So you got two maybe and a half four by, by six, or yeah, four. and then and then there was it, it's uh, quite quite a bit larger, maybe four by four. Uh huh. I mean, this, the head was, but uh, and this was done in what? On sheet rock. Okay, right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's it's permanent, in mm -hmm. other words, you know. It's I, in there. Yeah. yeah. So I think so. It's almost traditional, you know, yeah. techniques. Okay.
And we got another thing that's here. Just, like again, that's that Roman head that I kept re. I, I kept. The, I exhausted this, the idea of using this 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 ancient the, the Renaissance head with the geometric. That's uh -huh. it. Now this is back. Th when was this done? In the mid latter part, ninety-six maybe. Okay. You and know. should we go so along? We got yeah. thing you got, you're, part you're pretty of it. prolific. You're putting a lot out. Yeah. Not really. No, you don't <laughs> think? Okay. This way. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, no. That's it. Yeah, because I can't see it clear. Okay. It's bad print. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, um, like I said, it's, uh, you know, it's raised. The left uh -huh. panel is raised. That is raised. Yeah, yeah okay. it's plaster. Uh -huh. And um, and this orange. And uh, it's... Um, like I said, it's the the sense of um, this, the old marrying with coming colliding with a, a modern uh -huh, uh -huh. thing. So I, I, I exhausted that. Are these often done in terms of the environment and where they're going to be shown? Like a, I know you've done restaurants and you've done walls and you've done this mosaic and that kind of thing. Or you had that commission that was set into a home and it was set into mm -hmm. the overall uh, ambiance and the sex structure of the place or. Or uh, how, or do you have something that they say bring that which you've created in your studio yeah, and put it here, it, or how it does that depends. come about? It just depends. They'll come to you know, client will come to the studio and uh -huh. and uh, okay, we've come to the yeah. end. We, these these were some that were in a yeah, portfolio. Just some of the, the that we show. Thank you. you. And then now you've got some other things here too. Also, well, now, let's show. And we can't. We're gonna have to show them within the portfolio, which are, we well, this try and tilt so you don't get a. Part the of the reflection uh, of the uh, of the uh, pla of the cover. Well, this is this is just the plaster taking the plaster, which is the the medium. Okay, my, this my is in an environment now. That's what is a, residence, a residence. A residence, right? It's a it's a plaster wall. Yeah. It's not the formulated layered? stuff that people are putting on walls these days. This uh -huh. is a. It, what what the problem with people are doing these plaster walls that they come it's synthetic that comes in the can and this is the old the old formula so that that red is layered five hues many of, uh, five hues of yeah. red layered in time yeah. or how is that done overlaid and, overlaid. and, and so you, and you, you see do that. one layer uh, in a certain shade By changing you do another layer in another shade and you have it right. melt and they come they blend through By, yeah and that's the technique and the change the the ever so subtle change uh -huh. of the hue changes the uh, gives the, the appearance of depth and is that a, is that a, an ancient or an old tradition? Well, everything is thing? you know. I mean, yeah. from Pompeii and yeah, you know. from Pompeii that goes back pretty yeah. far. Yeah, right. But you yeah. know, just staying true to you know how uh, people bake. And people, I think the Da Vinci who did that sort of stuff. Bake he, he, by just throwing. Yeah, they have the feel. For right, them. right, 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 you right. Know. And he did do exactly that kind of thing. Is he, he? He put a great deal of attention to that. Well, it seems to, to it seems that. to be the. The, that's that's the case. beautiful. And so if you look at that carefully, you're going to see It doesn't read in print. It's hard to, yeah, obviously. Yeah, it doesn't read in the print, no. but I understand. Yeah. Now, you've got some other stuff you've done. you got it in this portfolio, and we're going to have a little problem with the, the cover, well, perhaps. But let's see, where are these things here? This is well, it's just some of the stuff. Part Should of we the just take it from, from here, Billy? Sometimes, uh, uh, Should we take it from here or from the other way? No, this is good. Here, this is okay. plaster again. Plum plaster. That's now let's see. How does that's this bringing the? Uh, what is it like yeah, this? Yeah, that's huh? in a restaurant. Yeah, it was. It's no longer exists. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, you can come on that. It's just a. You know, uh, uh -huh. it was a restaurant we did. Um, is this the one in Columbus Avenue? It was. It no longer exists anymore. Uh -huh. It was. It was a design build project that we did in '96. Mm-hmm. Um, that we hired. Um, Five. We we hired a bunch of uh, artisans, uh -huh. and uh, we we created everything. We we did all the travertine columns, and we have some more pictures and, of it. And uh, all the pl recreated the, you know, yeah, col the the um, soffits, yeah, uh, old traditional now old you wanna, plaster work. Okay, you want to move some more of these pictures? Yeah. You can do it, and just let me. You well, can explain it. No, it's this or way. How. Okay. And so I can't see just, because I'm looking behind this. And you know, yeah, I'll you see. deal with it. This, this and is I'll just be the easel. Here. This is just this restaurant. You know, the, we we created the um, we made the design light fixtures and <coughs> and um, let's see. Now you got to go a little slower because they are just coming in on it now. This this restaurant doesn't exist anymore. But it was <coughs> it was 
Let me let me just grab this. I don't. Um, I just want to. That's the stairwell. Yeah. Basically, with the show, it was just in in the in the context of of getting outside of of the art and out of the studio and and. Um, my wife being an architect. Yeah, you work together, yeah. Uh, at times we've done some things. We've done some restaurants, um, quite yeah. a few in the city um, that we've teamed up on. And you've used that, you designed this whole thing. Yeah, we did. We, this we was designed, got renovated, we really. We gutted it and restored the floors. We uh. built the staircases, uh, uh, red lilac blue stone, mm -hmm. uh, redid the floors. It's, um, you it's know, a big we created project. the, yeah, at that time. Yeah. You know, it was it was a nice undertaking. We were given a nice budget, and we did it. It was it, it came out very nice. It and was ahead of its time. The restaurant. It, just it was. Didn't you think? Yeah, really. And yeah. it had that. I'm it proud it of it because everything was created uh, by by a handful of artisans who went in. It was very different from the typical. And, uh, yeah. Right. Guys who come in and just do sheetrock. It was really thought out, and yeah. you know, the light fixtures were were like. It and you you had that mosaic that was in car depth. mufflers. You had the wall that was in mosaic was in depth, yeah, right? Yeah, because yeah. it was that payer that layered. Is right, that seco right. or or, or yeah, fresco? Exactly. That was seco. Okay. Right. okay. Okay. Well, that that's in the here is just really uh, you know just a bunch of uh, we did some f furniture in furniture and I one. remember you did that furniture. Plaster. Yeah. Okay. Designed these like that. Okay. Made these uh, pieces in, in. Are you still doing the furniture design? No, we went to a small period of time where. Yeah, I remember you were in that. Period. In the late '80s, uh -huh. I did a, f a few years. I just took some time. We I made some very abstract pieces of furniture. Right. We, we put it in. I didn't design these. I it. I just did these pieces in, in, plaster though. Plaster, uh -huh. and this is stone and steel, and and we did some huge, um, dressers that were. Seven feet high. I remember drawers I remember. on all sides yeah. in metal. You were really into well, that. Well, for two years, I had I yeah. worked with my brothers. Yeah, and they have a shop and the furniture. They're Out they're, Island, they're so. um, yeah. carpenters and uh -huh. put together a did some abstract furniture uh -huh. and put together a show with an, another fellow and at the Javits Center. We came in. We won uh, one of the top prizes. Good for you, really. It was interesting because yeah. I just, I, you go through a that? period of time, I wanted to do some, some of these wild pieces of furniture. There's a lot of direction. And marry materials. Mary, Stone with want, metal. These yeah. drawers actually work. They were, just to figure out and actually build them. Uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. lucite, uh -huh. you know, plaster. Right. On, on, on. I mean, at that time, nobody was doing that stuff. Uh -huh. Well, good you for know. you for doing it. You know, we yeah. took we we took a leap of faith, and you know, drawers on three sides, and just things that were drawers on three sides of a cabinet. You can't do that. That's mm -hmm. not legal. Oh. I think that's illegal, isn't it? You can't have drawers on three it was, sides. It was an interesting you period. You can't do that. It's impossible. We did. We you did. did. You we did. did. I think often that's what the artist is up to doing. You know, well, trying to do know. something that can't be done. <laughs> but. Uh, you know. And, you know, so I don't know, that, 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 I know that was a handsome building, that one you did, and I know others, too, you've been doing that, and then you, you do a number of, um, you do residence and also commercial spaces and that kind of thing for, with, the, with a sense of design and everything like that. Yeah. And you know, you're sometimes busy it's a, as a bee. A real, real job sometimes, but, I mean, my, the art is, um, is, is the soul of, of, uh, of it know, all. is the spirit, you know. Yeah. I c keeps everything in perspective, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, it's uh, and it's also very much tied into uh, into your training in that. Back again to Da Vinci. Constantly we're visualizing. You know. Pardon? Constantly visualizing. You know, it's it's a muscle. Yeah, it's a muscle. If you don't use it, you're going to lose exactly. it, right? Yeah, that kind you of thing. Know. And you're doing. It. So what do you do? What are you primarily involved in, right? Say in this time of well, I just October of 2005. I just How are things the, going? What are you involved with? Just the project um, exterior. I'm working. I was just working with a new material that um, hadn't been applied to an exterior of a building. A new material. That's a new just material. Come into is glass and titanium uh -huh. combination. Glass bead plaster uh -huh. Uh -huh. and um, this on down in the in um, in the uh, lower east side, and I put it on an exterior of a penthouse. It was a glass bead. Plaster, which is very interesting I mean, material. It, it, it was the just exterior. Yeah. The exterior. Yeah. Very smooth, uh -huh. very difficult to work with. Uh -huh. And uh, it was a project that um, that I got involved with and I, did, I fabricated it and uh, pretty dynamic. 
yeah. to come and, um, and where is it? It down, can be seen. Down. Can be seen. Yeah, yeah, it's actually you a private residence. A yeah, okay. penthouse. You don't have never. You don't have to have a photo. We no, don't have not, a, yeah. maybe an, you, I know you have a photograph it's, it's other places. Very it's very. It's very. We uh, got together sort of on short notice here. Yeah. And you got a whole lot of stuff uh, that could be uh, included. We didn't have uh, access to access to in time to shoot this particular thing. You said new materials. There are new materials like in architecture or in a sense of design. There are new things coming available with which the artist's mind or the architect's mind can work. Um, the design capability changes through time as things advance. We get new materials. I, um, Forced by you couldn't codes. Have, like I said to a fellow the other day, you couldn't have a uh, skyscrapers until Mr. Otis invented the elevator. I mean, the, the, the parameters and the new materials come new polymers, new kinds of materials. Are there a lot of new materials coming available yeah. to the visual artist or somebody like yourself that give new fields of experimentation that weren't available to you because we just didn't have what is now new material in the days gone by and that we're getting more things to work with well, in yeah. terms of uh, exercising the artistic capability and so forth? Well, you know, the, a lot of things are constantly being developed for c reasons for and taken out of context. Th things are being developed for one reason and using for, used for another. Yeah, that's this good. It can translate, yeah. But, you know, uh, and, and a lot is related to codes, codes change, building codes. You okay, know? I mean, yeah, as far that's as, getting uh, into that. That's yeah. very important, you know, yeah. with, in, uh, you know for what's happened. And what happened, you're doing in some of these, for, yeah, right. Even out east, you uh -huh. know, with the hurricane code system, you know, there's the whole code thing changed, you know, building codes yeah. change. So, you know, windows where you would have a glass home, <coughs> you know, glass, you know, they're, they're reducing the amount mm -hmm. of glass that you can use, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and um, cornices and, but, you know, the plastics, strengthening plastics. So I say the polymers have been here, what, 30, 40 years or 50 years? Concrete, you yeah. actually have a, yeah. you can, there's a new material, there's concrete that you can see through. Really? Yeah. How can you see through concrete? Well, it's, there's this very, really? it's, it's like this mesh concrete, yeah. and it's, it's permeable, you know. It, it's permeable, you can see through, it's translucent. Translucent, yeah. Yeah, translucent, right. so you can see light through it right, and everything right. like that. You know, but, so there's a marriage. Yeah, right. You know, and there's constant, things are constantly going on in that respect. Right. Which I have because I see and you, 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 you rejoice in, in experimenting with some of the new things that come available and mixing them up, like you know, well, that, and putting the things idea, together you know, in an yeah. artistic kind of way. And yeah. I asked you before: Does it come easy? Is it hard when you're doing a pro like when you're doing a three thing, uh, the the cabinet with three sides, which well, is not supposed that to was be? A, you were doing that. Were, was that was that a fun process? Were you involved with that, or do you get your your all kinds of anxiety nah. trying to do something new and it doesn't want to work and it's hard? Or how is it the work when you're when you're engaged in the artistic thing? And what do we know about Da Vinci when he was engaged? Was he happy when he's engaged, or was I, it a big struggle? Or I would what probably about, if we say don't know him, what about you? How would I, I would probably say in, on from what I've read. Yeah, is and that you've read a lot. Constantly, he wasn't. He was constantly searching. Yeah, for the next thing. Yeah, he was never satisfied. You know. Uh, uh, very motivated, mm -hmm. but then again, always thinking of the next thing. Yeah. So he, he, he and and the result is he hardly finished anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, realistically, I mean, really, his paintings are all his paintings. You know, really aren't done. There are a lot of them. The are Mona just Lisa started, is right? not finished, really. It I mean, isn't finished. Not, not, <laughs> not <laughs> to kill it. That was the greatest painting, perhaps ever. You know, in the minds of many. I mean, yeah. To some respect. Well, then you would start something, and then, in a certain sense, design. You know, a design is really important. The idea of design, because design goes right into all kinds of things. Like there are all kinds of uh, capabilities that come from good design, and design isn't just. Uh, I, I mean, it it affects everything. The design of uh, the basic template for human institutions. Design capability is very important. It seems to me it's like an artistic thing where you can put in good design, the general theme, form, following, function, and everything like that that's in architecture, does that, does that uh, make sense? Uh, and, and things are also, there's a term, ephemeralization, doing more with less. 
uh, in the realm of uh, information technologies. They're now getting computers. They're going to be molecular. Oh, yeah. And that's going to make a lot of capability available. You can do more with less. And the, new, the design capability, our capability, that the collective capability that's emerging is giving us opportunities that are emerging all the time anew. And that essentially is led, that movement in the human experience is led by design. Then there's means by which that design capability is understood and incorporated artistically, perhaps in an antenna way. And then it's translated into the actual creation of things in the, in the real built environment or in the environment. But it's on a leading edge kind of way that the artistic and the sense of design is intrinsic to, I guess, to the whole artistic process. Design is a very important word. It yeah. might be a thing by which we could be led more than we it's allow hard. ourselves to be led by you know, it, it's uh, monetary really or financial it's things rather than it's our it's capability. It's tough. It's, it's also, a lot has to do with where you're at. Yeah. And, and uh, politics, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's why yeah, holding true to, um, you know, it's a fine line, you know. Yeah. I mean, you go in different parts of the world, they're doing great things, Japan, mm. and, you know, and then there's the uh, design for the sake of, you know, very cosmetic. Yeah, well, there is that, yeah. It's, um, mm. you know, and then this theme stuff we went through, uh -huh. you know, and the cookie cutter. And, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so, the, uh, you know, there's something to be said for the people to take the chances and, and you know, live, not necessarily um, that their name is all over the press. Yeah, You right. know, I look for the, the you know, the, the between the lines. Yeah, Those right. people that fall between the lines that are doing, oh, working on the cutting edge of things. Yeah. You'll find those, those are the people to be admired, you know, yeah. and, I, and I have great regard for people, you know. Yeah. In, in, to go full circle, Angelo um, always took the chance. He pushed the envelope. Oh, yeah. Savelli. Yeah. You know, That's an important. You know, thing. and and when he left Italy, and he had the chance to be with all the top flight guys, uh -huh. he of his peers, mm -hmm. he came here and to push the envelope to okay. to take chances. Well, I think a lot of the artists have pushed the envelope and helped move the design capability and the whole human scenario ahead. And you're one of those people in that tradition. You've studied Mr. Da Vinci and so forth. And thank you, Billy. It's really good talking to you, uh, William, uh, William Vinci. And it's been your pleasure to have the perceptions of a dear old friend of mine and a friend of the world. He's led a very well-led life in an artistic mode, uh, William uh, uh, Vinci. And he's an artist and a designer. Happy to share all of this kind of thing uh, again uh, of, uh, with an Italian background that may be tied into the great Da Vinci himself. And on Columbus Day, I think it's appropriate we talk and Harold honor Channer. the, the uh, Italian Renaissance, the High Renaissance. It was such a mo major moment in human history. So thank you for viewing. We'll be uh, asking for you to tune in. We'll come back in tomorrow. William, uh, Billy Vinci, welcome very, I mean, thank you very much for coming in. Great pleasure talking to you thank as you always. Thank so you Uncle Channer. We'll be coming back tomorrow. So, I mean, I'm, We're I'm glad my cell phone didn't go off. Yes, that's right. I you don't want the cell phone off. to go off and mess everything up. Yeah, yeah. But so we got a, a lot in, and I remember him.